Welcome to Northwoods Kindred. I'm your goalie, Bodvar, and on this channel we discuss all things Asatru Kindred related. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see how we do it in the Northwoods. Today, in this video, what we're going to do is finish off these two quick meats so that we can get them in a bottle and get them ready to use for ritual. Coming up. So before we can use these, these are these are quick meats. Uh, we actually let them go a little longer than we probably should have. We brewed them in the beginning of December, and now we're about this, a month into it, maybe a month and a week. Uh, we could have done this about as early as three weeks. We just got busy, and you know how it is. So we're going to kill the yeast to keep it from, you know, expanding in the bottle and blowing a cork and making a big mess like it does sometimes. But if you're gonna use it right away, if you're gonna brew from gathering to gathering to gathering, you don't have to worry about killing the yeast. You can just put it in a bottle, take it out the ritual, you know, or consume it at your gathering and it'll all be just fine. But since this will most likely get set up on the shelf and used for some occasion down the road, we don't want it to get hot and paint the ceiling in honey wine. So we're gonna go ahead and kill the yeast. That's what we're gonna do first. Now, what we're gonna to use to kill the yeast is a chemical called potassium sorbate, or PSK. Pretty cheap, you can get it on Amazon. I'll link to it below. And we're gonna use this formula that comes, the instructions are right on the bag. If not, you can Google it. And it's essentially, we're doing a one gallon batch, so we're gonna use three quarter teaspoons. And then you can just multiply that by any size batch you're doing, whether it's a five, an eight, or a hundred. Just multiply it by that, and then you can dilute the stuff prior to and put it in. But since we're dealing with such a small batch, we're gonna do it a little bit different. Plus we're dealing with basic kitchen equipment here, not more of an advanced brewing equipment. So we're doing this on a strict budget. Uh, so we're not gonna do racking canes and all that cool stuff. We're just gonna do the best we can do. So I'm gonna remove this uh, fermentation lock and I'm gonna very gently pour this into there. If I get a little bit of the sludge out of the bottom, no big deal. You know, some people like to chew their meat anyway. This is not sterile, but it is a clean container. It's not sterile because this will be used immediately. But now I just want to try and get as much mead in it without disturbing that yeast. But I will disturb it. It will happen. Now, as this oxygenates and aerates, this could actually kick off the brewing cycle again. It could start fermenting and bubbling and doing cool things. We're not going to over-concern ourselves with that because we're going to kill it anyway. Looks like most everything's coming with it. And that's okay. We're gonna call that a win. I'm not gonna go any farther because you can see, I don't really wanna add that to the mix. So rather than add that, we'll just call this trash. We're gonna stick the lid on this bottle for a second and rinse this one out. Now this is a really good thing to do if you live out in the country because adding that yeast into your septic system will help it break down all the biomatter and bacteria that's in there and help keep your septic functioning well. So. Never be afraid to dump some yeast down the drain. If you're in the city, well, that's the city's problem. So I'm not overly concerned about this and I'm not concerned about the sterility of it. This is, I just needed to get it off of the original yeast uh, so that I can, you know, I just need to clean it up a little bit. And now I'm gonna kill it. So if there is any little bits of bacteria that I just got in it during this whole process, the PSK will kill it. And everything we spill is the house vetters cut. So now that we did that, I'm going to add some PSK right into this mix. A quarter teaspoon. Three times. Et. Oh. And I will put this back in. Just to keep any foreign particles out. While we let that PSK do its job, we're gonna repeat the exact same process on our other quick mead that we did in the plastic jug. And that's what we have in this one. I'll slosh that yeast around a little bit. We will give it to the septic tank whites. And we'll just throw that one away. There's no point in repeating the process, because like I said, if you brew it in plastic, throw it away each time, and you won't have any worries. So we'll just finish out the process in this new bottle. And we'll just give these some time to die in peace. 
All right, so these have been sitting for a few hours with that PSK, so I think that they're probably pretty good. Now, the trick is we have to sample them, taste them, without transferring any bacteria, and which shouldn't matter because we already killed everything in it, but we still don't want to take a chance of transferring bacteria back. So we're going to sample it, and then we're going to taste it, and then add sugar or honey back to it, re-sweeten it, stir it up, sample it again, and go back and forth until we get just the right amount of sweetness to it. Now I have the calculations already, what I generally do for a five gallon batch, but I don't have that for a one gallon, and it may not actually work. So we're just gonna do it by taste, uh, because that's probably the most realistic way to do it anyway. Man. And in order to keep from contaminating everything, I'm just gonna use this little spoon here, so I can bam a little into this little rubber dish. It's good, but it's it's very alcoholic and very dry taste. So we're gonna add a little honey. Probably went a little overboard with that batch. And I just gotta, um, since it's not, it's room temperature, but it's not warm. So it's gonna take a minute to dissolve this honey. But anytime you put honey back into your carboy or anything, it's always better to dissolve it into a, into a mixture first. Remember, we're not trying to meet some random standard by some brewery in the hills of Montana. We're just making a little bit of honey wine at home, serve to our friends, and have a good time. And I give that disclaimer, because I'm about to mix it up. All right, sample number two, back sweeten number one. Could use a little more, I think. What do you think? Yes, more please. All right, not much though. Now you can work your recipes and you can do your thing and you can bring it down to the science and have exact measurements on everything, but man, I don't know that you can beat just making it taste. You might as well enjoy, enjoy the art of it. You are giving it to the gods. Or enjoying it with kin, you should enjoy the process as well. Ace test number three, sweeten number two. I would have checked the alcohol content on it. But I would put that, I'd probably put that at about an 11, 11% 11 alcohol by volume. We'll do the same process again with the second batch, the one we brewed in plastic. And I will admit, it's not something I've ever done. I've always brewed in glass. So we will see what we get with this thing. Okay. Give a little, a little sizzle here. Surprisingly, it's different than that one. Even though they were brewed together and put in different bottles, it's a different mead. We're going to back sweeten it. I know from the last one that it took a fair amount of honey. up this mess and then we'll get some bottles sterilized and then we'll just transfer this to the bottles throw some labels on it we'll get going okay, so you can do whatever you want when it comes to bottling you can pour it into a old wine bottle and screw the lid on uh, consume it immediately it really doesn't matter but what I'm planning on doing with these since we made a quick meet and we don't usually do it like that I'm gonna put mine in beer bottles and I'll set them aside and I'll of course serve them up to my kinsmen however we need them and I'll also set aside a little bit just for kind of a if I want to go do a solo boat or if I want to, you know, go 
thank the gods for one thing or another, and I don't want to do a big kindred ritual with a big bottle of mead. I've always got one or two of these that I can throw in there. Or uh, I use them a lot for just kind of like small offerings. So we're just going to put them in beer bottles because that's a very convenient way to do it and a way to keep track of it. And so I can, I'm filling it up, leaving it basically to the bottom of the funnel spout because then I know I can get roughly the same headspace on all of them. One bottle to the next. I'll set a cap on it just to keep any foreign particles from landing in there like dust or gnats. And I'll just go through the whole process. So now I'm just going to cap it with this capper, and if you want to do it this way, I'll link on Amazon to, you know, a, a cheap capper and some bottle caps. I'm using silver caps here to denote that this is my quick mead. Um, I usually use black caps for my other meads. The first video in this quick mead series is linked to in the end card, so go watch that one too, and you'll see that I brewed both of these meads exactly the same, and then just split them up into two separate containers. That's all I did, and the mead with the that was brewed in the plastic container imparted a different flavor. It has kind of a nutty flavor and the mead from the glass container has kind of a pure a pure flavor to it. Pure kind of honey flavor. And they're both naked meads. I didn't add anything else to them other than what they needed for the brewing process. So this one is not my favorite. So my suggestion would be that if you're going to copy this recipe for sure go get a glass container. It is perfectly healthy and everything to brew in plastic container, but like I said, brew once and then throw the container away and get another container. But it did impart a weird flavor that I don't care for, but it's perfectly safe to drink. And some people will really enjoy it because it has kind of like that oak barrel flavor. It's just not something that my palate prefers. I prefer more of a fruity, light flavor, personally. So I labeled the caps with P and G for the one that was brewed in plastic, the one that was brewed in glass. Um, and don't get me wrong on it, the, the flavors are the flavors are just really immature because you know the meat is <laughs> a month old. So I'll go through and I'll just label them, but I want to be able to separate which ones were in which container. So I'll just label them in, in blue painter's tape. That's how I do it because I don't have to worry about how to clean the bottles afterwards. I just peel the tape off and it's clean with no residue. When you do this. Um, Refine your recipe. When you build up the equipment and everything, don't be afraid to experiment, add cinnamon, add spices, add some apples, add some peaches, plums, pears, whatever you want. Um, experiment with it, have fun, play with it. The idea isn't that you do quick meads for the rest of your days. The idea is that you get the hang of it and then you start doing larger batches for longer periods of time. And these quick meads are a really good fallback if you're running low or you're having a big event and you just need to get some mead within a month or so. And, uh, and that's really what it's good for. But they will taste a little immature, but they'll, they'll do the job, I promise you that. Also, when I brewed this, I brewed this double batch and I split it for the two different containers. I think we did a pretty good job of splitting the meat fairly equally. And then it just so happened that the one that has the most is the one that I like the most. So that works out pretty good for me. So may your mead be quick and your kinship last forever. Go to Vigi, my friends.